بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين اللهم أرنا الحق حق وارزقنا اتباعه وأرنا الباطل باطلا وارزقنا اجتنابه علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا وزدنا علما أخرجنا من ظلمات الوهم وأكرمنا بنور الفهم وأنم علينا يا عظيم رب اشرح لي صدري ويسل لي أمري وحل العقدة من لساني يفقه قول أما بعد all praise due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and peace be upon Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I testify that there is no God except Allah and I testify that Muhammad is the Prophet and the Messenger of Allah. And I ask Allah azza wa jalla to make us from amongst those who listen and hear and act upon what they listen and hear. We will continue talking about the tricks of the shaitan, the evil plotting and planning of this shaitan, the, Allah, the one that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala warns us of, the one that Allah azza wa jal clearly states in the quran kareem and repeats in many different places in the quran kareem إِنَّ الشَّيْطَانَ لَكُمْ عَدُوٌ فَاتَّخِذُوا عَدُوَ Indeed, the shaitan is your enemy, so take him as an enemy. And we spoke about different aspects and different ways and forms that the shaitan plans and plots and tries to trick you and entrap you. And last week we spoke about ignorance and extremism and we related extremism to ignorance and the very fact and the main reason why people take an extreme path is because their lack of knowledge, their ignorance of Islam. Another trick and a trap from the shaitan is anger. When a man comes to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he says to him, O Messenger of Allah, guide me, give me an advice. So the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says to him, La taghdab, don't get angry. So this man insists on the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to give him another advice. So he says, O oh, Messenger of Allah, give me another advice. So the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says to him, La taghdab, don't get angry. For the third time, this man will ask the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam for an advice. And the Prophet Muhammad alayhi salatu wa sallam will respond to him the same way as he responded to him twice before, La taghdab, don't get angry. And the reason the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam advised his companion or this man not to get angry because of the evilness of the implication and ramifications of anger. The evil outcome of anger. When people become angry, shaitan takes and makes the most out of them. As the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says in the hadith, that shaitan flows in one of you, the way your blood flows in you. See how your blood flows in you, and it flows in every single part of your body. That's exactly the same case with the shaitan. The shaitan flows in you, the way the blood flows in you. And then he says in another hadith, that shaitan is made out of fire. And what extinguishes fire is water. Therefore, if you ever get angry, and that's from the shaitan, the best form to extinguish that fire of the shaitan is to perform ablution, is to perform wudu, as the Prophet ﷺ encourages for that. So you could come out of that frame of being linked or being clinged to the shaitan. To come out of that frame of being attached to the shaitan. And the best way to detach yourself from the shaitan and disconnect yourself from the shaitan is to perform wudu as the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he says in this hadith. Allah azza wa jal he says وَالْكَاظِمِينَ الْغَيْضَ وَالْعَافِينَ عَنِ النَّاسِ وَاللَّهِ يُحِبُّ الْمُحْسِنِينَ Allah is praising the believers. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is praising the righteous and pious people. And Allah says وَالْكَاظِمِينَ الْغَيْضَ those who restrain their anger, they control their anger. 
وَلَعَافِينَ عَنِ النَّاسِ And they pardon people. وَاللَّهُ يُحِبُّ الْمُحْسِنِينَ And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves the good doers. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves the good doers. Anger is another key and another door for the shaytan. For the shaytan to entrap you into his evilness. Another door that the shaytan uses to deviate you and to mislead you and misguide you. And that's why Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in many other ahadiths, he always encourages not to get angry. And if you do, get angry for the sake of Allah. When does someone get angry for the sake of Allah? You get angry for the sake of Allah when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is disobeyed. You get angry for the sake of Allah when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is being disobeyed. You get angry for the sake of Allah azza wa jal when the wrong actions are being committed. You get angry for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when someone is doing something wrong by Islam. But we don't get angry for ourselves. And if you look at the unique character of the Prophet alayhi salatu was salam, that's how he was. If he got angry, he got angry for the sake of Allah. And if he got happy, he was happy for the sake of Allah. That's the character of the mu'min. Anger. You realize that when people get angry, they lose their mind. They're no longer focused. They don't think anymore. They do the wrong things. And you realize even amongst yourself, within yourself, that when you get angry, you do things that later on you regret. While you're angry, you're no longer in your concentration. You're no longer in your mind. And that's why shaitan takes advantage of that moment that you are fuming, you are outraged, you are angry, and he goes and he takes every single advantage of that moment to make sure that he misleads you and puts you in the wrong position. Some people, when they get angry, not only they start abusing others, but even to the extent people start abusing Islam. People start even swearing Allah Azza wa Jalla Billah. These are people that pray. These are people that fast. But when they, they are so angry, they're no longer in their mental state. They're no longer in their fit and stable mental state. Therefore, they start committing wrong things and start saying wrong things. That's why then put yourself in a position where you get angry. Then open that door for the shaitan. Then open that door for the shaitan for him to come into you and mislead you and make you do something wrong. For that, the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam insisted on this man three times. Then get angry, then get angry, then get angry because anger can be the mother of evilness. Anger can be the door of all evilness. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says in the Quran al-Kareem, وَإِمَّا يَنْزَغَنَّكَ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ نَزْغٌ فَاسْتَعِذْ بِاللَّهِ إِنَّهُ وَالسَّمِيعُ الْعَلِيمُ If you feel that the shaitan is whispering in you, and the shaitan is trying to deviate you, or the shaitan is insinuating in you, Allah Azza wa says, فَاسْتَعِذْ بِاللَّهِ Seek refuge in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. سَأَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمُ O oh Allah, I seek refuge in you. I seek your protection from the evil shaitan. For that, whenever we begin reading the Quran, the first thing that we begin with is A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitan Rajeem. When you wake up in the morning, you seek Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's protection over the shaitan. In the evening, you seek Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's protection over the shaitan. And in Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says in many different ahadith, about when you seek protection in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and seek refuge in Allah azza wa jal from the shaitan. And it all revolves around those moments where you become mentally weak. And when do you become mentally weak? When you're angry. Mentally unstable. And that's when you're angry. And for that, shaitan takes advantage of that. You seek Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's protection. When you're angry, say, A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitan Ar-Rajeem. And change your position. If you are sitting, stand up. If you are standing there, make wudu, as the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said. Extinguish the fire of the shaitan. But don't let the shaitan take the most out of you. Don't let the shaitan control you. With your iman, you are beyond the shaitan controlling you. With your piety and righteousness, 
You are beyond of the shaitan controlling you. That's why my brother in Islam, my sister in Islam, do not open the door of the shaitan. Do not open the door for the shaitan to come into you and to try and persuade you and manipulate you while you're angry. And remember, everything happens by the will of Allah Azza wa Jal. Nothing happens by your will, nothing happens by the will of anyone, and it happens by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In a hadith, the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, that rely and depend on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and everything good that you want to do in life. Rely on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in everything good that you want to do in life. Wala ta'jas. Then the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, don't be despaired. Don't break your hopes in Allah. Don't you break your hopes that you can't achieve or accomplish what you want to accomplish. Then the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, and if something befalls you, Something happens to you. You are struck by something. In Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam says, do not say low. Then say if. Then say if. If I didn't do this, this would have not happened. Or if I did that, or took a different path, or I took a different idea, or made something different, this would have not happened. فَإِنَّ لَوْ تَفْتَحْ بَابِ الشَّيْطَانِ If opens the door of the shaitan. How many times in life we do things and then because something or the outcome of that thing that we did is not the best of outcome, so we are struck with a calamity or something wrong or something evil befalls us. Then we start saying, you know what, if I didn't do this, this would have not happened. Or if I decided to do that, that would have not happened. And Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa says, don't say low. Don't say low if. If I did this, this would have not happened. If I didn't do that, this would have not happened. If opens the door of the shaitan. So what do he say? He say, Qaddar Allah wa masha'a fa'al. Qaddar Allah, whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had decreed, wa masha'a fa'al, and whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted would have happened. This is the quality of the mu'min. Depends on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, relies on Allah azza wa jal, in his or her matters, in all their matters. You depend on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in all your matters. And if something comes, it's from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Something good, we thank Allah azza wa jalla for it. Something evil or bad befalls us, we have patience for the sake of Allah. As the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says in another hadith, the amazing to the character of the mu'min, everything good is good for him. If something good comes to him, he thanks Allah azza wa jalla for it. And if something harmful or evil or bad befalls him, he has patience for the sake of Allah. وَمَا ذَلِكَ إِلَّا لِلْمُؤْمِنِ This is only for the believer. This quality is only the quality of the mu'min. It is only the character of the mu'min. Don't open the gate of the shaitan. Don't open the door for the shaitan to deviate you. إِنَّ الشَّيْطَانَ لَكُمْ عَدُوٌ فَاتَّخِذُهُ عَدُوًا Indeed, the shaitan is your enemy. So take him as an enemy. We need to declare the enmity on the shaitan. We need to declare that. We can't continue to believe that the shaitan is our enemy and then we befriend the shaitan. Because what, that's what's really happening. We know the shaitan is our enemy, but we don't treat the shaitan like our enemy. We treat the shaitan like our best friend. We treat the shaitan like our best ally. Shaitan is your enemy. Take him as an enemy. It just doesn't make sense. That you know someone is your enemy that wants bad for you and evilness, but yet you take them as your best friend. This is what's happening. And it continues to happen. And when you find a lot of people always falling into the trick and the trap of the shaitan. And then they say it's from the shaitan. Well, since you know it's from the shaitan, why do you follow the shaitan? The shaitan from the moment he came into this world has been following and chasing you to make sure that your ending is in the hellfire. As the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, every single baby that is born, is born on the fitrah. And then the parents of this baby will change him to, they'll change him to a different religion, whether to be Christianity or Judaism or any other religion. And then the Prophet alayhi salatu wa sallam, he says, and every baby that's born, the shaitan will touch them, he will poke them. And that's why when the baby comes out, 
The scholar said the baby comes out into this dunya from his or his her mother's womb crying. Why they're crying? Because the shaitan poked him. This is what the Prophet ﷺ, he says. When the baby is born, is born crying because he's been or he her, her been poked by the shaitan. Then the Prophet ﷺ, he says, except Maryam and his son Isa. They were the only two beings or the only two human beings that the shaitan did not poke them when they were born. From that moment, just before you completely come out into this world, the shaitan is onto you. The shaitan is chasing you. And the one effort that you put to try and protect yourself from the shaitan, in return, shaitan puts a thousand effort to try and deviate you, misguide you and mislead you. For that, we need to be conscious and we need to be vigilant and aware of what the shaitan is trying to do and the traps of the shaitan. And one of them is that the shaitan fires you up. He fires you up. He makes you get angry. He makes you be outraged. He makes you to be so angry because he knows the moment that you are angry is that moment that he can control you. For that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala praises those who restrain themselves and control themselves. And the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa many different hadith, he insists and alayhi salatu wa salam encourages not to get angry. Then get angry. Then let the shaitan take advantage of you. Then let the shaitan use you. Also, the shaitan takes advantage of any moment and exploits any moment of weakness. Even to the extent that the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says that when you sneeze, you thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for that moment that you sneezed. And Allah loves that moment that his servant sneezes and then thanks Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when you sneeze and you say alhamdulillah, Allah azza wa loves that moment. But when you yawn, when you yawn, and yawning is a sign of weakness. When you yawn, it's like a sign of weakness, that you are tired and fatigued. And that's why when you see someone respectful and they yawn in the public, you lose respect to them. It's not nice. When you see someone in a position of leadership and they yawn in front of everyone, it's not a nice perception. It's not a nice image. In Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, when you yawn, cover your mouth with your hand. If it's the right hand, you cover it like this. And if it's the left hand, you cover it like that. In Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, because the shaitan laughs. He laughs and makes mockery of the son of Adam when he or she yawns. Why is he laughing at you when you yawn? Because he can see weaknesses in you. Look at him, he's tired, fatigue. He's not strong. He's not fit. That's why he laughs at you. For that in Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the one that taught mankind and the one that taught us alayhi salatu wa salam, the best of qualities and characteristics, he teaches us that when we yawn, we cover our mouth. Or try and keep your mouth closed. Don't open your mouth because it's that moment that shaitan makes a mockery of you. He's laughing at you. This is your enemy. When you, there's a grudge between you and someone, anything that can take your enemy down, you laugh about it. And that's how it is with the shaitan. He's your enemy. Even though sometimes we befriend him, but he is your enemy whether you like it or not. And when he sees you in a state of weakness, he laughs. He has the best time of his life. Ah, oh, look at him. So weak, so fatigued. Then forget the history between mankind and the human beings and the, and the shaitan. Shaitan doesn't have a direct problem with Allah Azza wa Jal. His problem is with you. Why did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala favor you over him? So he wants to prove that point to everyone that he is better than you. And you are nothing. You are just a weak creation. You are just a weak creation for that the shaitan will do anything to put you down. And when he sees you yawn, he laughs. He makes mockery of you. 
And look at the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, what he teaches us, alayhi salatu wa sallam, to cover our mouth. The quality of the mu'min. The quality of the true believer. Also the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he tells us that when we eat, not to eat with our left. For the reason of that the shaitan eats with the left. And when you eat with the left, shaitan eats with you. That's why he says, eat with your right. He's teaching us, alayhi salatu was salam, to keep that distance between us and the shaitan. And not to let the shaitan to control us in any way or form. This is the teaching of the Prophet, alayhi salatu was salam. If you follow the teachings of the Prophet, alayhi salatu was salam, you'll be far away from the shaitan. You'll be distant from the shaitan. In which makes you a lot more stronger to take care of yourself and get closer to Allah. Because the more distant you are from the shaitan, is the closer you are to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The more distant you are from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is the closer you are to the shaitan. So one step closer to Allah, it's one step away from the shaitan. One step closer to the shaitan is one step away from Allah azza wa That's why Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his teachings focuses a lot on how to us protect ourselves from the shaitan and be closer to Allah and distant from the shaitan. And he teaches us those simple things. What's a hand about you covering your mouth or eating with your right? And doing some ad'iyah that can prevent you or protect you from the shaitan. So simple. But sometimes it's our laziness. And that's another door of the shaitan. Laziness. Laziness that the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect him from laziness every single morning and evening. When Nabi alayhi salatu wa salam he says, Allahumma inna a'udhu bika min al-abzi wal kasal. Oh Allah, I seek refuge in you from laziness, from despondence. Laziness is another form of the shaitan, another way of the shaitan, another path of the shaitan. Because when you're lazy, you can't perform your obligations. When you're lazy, you don't pray. When you're lazy, you don't get up from Fajr. When you're lazy, you don't fast. When you're lazy, you don't read the Quran Kareem. When you're lazy, you don't attend the lessons. Laziness is from the shaitan. And anger is also from the shaitan. And hasting, and hasting, and rushing is also from the shaitan. As the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, Al-ajalatu min shaitan Hasting and rushing and want everything quick, quick, quick is from the shaitan. And you realize throughout your experiences that when you rush into something, you are more likely to do something wrong. That's why Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Don't haste. Don't rush. Take things. Take things in the way they should be taken. If it's time for you to rush, rush. But if it's time for you to stop and pause, stop and pause. Quick decisions sometimes are more likely to come out to be the wrong decisions. And that's why anger, that's why Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam discourages us and encourages us not to get angry. Discourages us from being angry and encourages us not to get angry. Because when you're angry, you rush into making decisions. You rush into deciding on matters. And sometimes there are crucial matters in your life could make or break you. But because you haste and because you rushed, you fall into the wrong path. You fall into the wrong action. Because you rushed, you do the wrong things. That's why Nabi says, Al-ajalatu min shaitan Rushing and hasting is from the shaitan, from the evil shaitan, so don't rush. During the time of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, two companions argued with one another and they start to swear at each other. So Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa got so angry from them and this is the anger for the sake of Allah azza wa jal because believers should not be fighting or disputing one another and then Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, by Allah, I know a word I know a word, if they uttered it, if they said it, they would not be in the position they are in. If they said it, they would not be fighting one another. That word, A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitan Ar-Rajeem, 
and seek refuge in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from the Aqqa shaitan. When you find yourself about to fall into the haram, or about to commit haram, or indulge yourself in the wrong path, say, A'udhu Billah min shaitan al-rajim. When you get angry, say, A'udhu Billah min shaitan al-rajim. When you are outraged, say, A'udhu Billah min shaitan al-rajim. When you are emotionally unstable, say, A'udhu Billah min shaitan al-rajim. When you find yourself, you're going to rush or hate into doing something, say, A'udhu Billah min shaitan al-rajim. When you're about to do something wrong, or about to sin, or fall into the evil deeds, say, A'udhu Billah min shaitan al-rajim. Ask Allah to protect you from the shaitan. Ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us from amongst those who listen and hear and act upon what they listen and hear. And I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us from amongst those who protect themselves from the shaitan and from amongst those that he protects from the shaitan. I ask Allah azza wa jal not to fall in the traps and the tricks of the shaitan. Subhanak Allahum wa bihamdik. Nashadu an la ilaha illa ant. Nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilayk. Thank